This is T, and I'm here with a sponsored product review. I'm working with Arteza, and I am going to also get a discount code that I will overlap on this video as well as include in the description box. So if you like this product, please go over to Arteza and purchase the product, and you'll receive a discount. So let me put my camera on the tripod, and we'll get started. I want to show you the packaging just because I want to show you that they really make sure that your product is secure when it arrives. And then I have this box here. And I like how they also package the rulers inside. They put things to keep it from slipping even in the box when it was closed. So I thought that their packaging was outstanding. And then also included in the package is 48 non-slip adhesive rings and it says that they're premium. So let's open that first. So yes, I do like to use grips on my rulers to keep them from slipping. So what I actually ordered was the four pack of the scrub rulers and they are in the four and a half inch square six inch square nine and a half inch square and twelve and a half inch square rulers so these are the rulers here and each one of the rulers are packaged inside of a plastic protective bag so they're not rubbing and scratching against each other so i thought that was a really nice of them they really are very conscientious of their packaging on the rulers it also has their logo and I like that it has the highlighted square all the way around that also means that you can use these for fussy cutting now I do like to use scrub rulers and I find that most quilters they will normally have the 12 and a half inch scrub ruler in their arsenal but I like to use the various different size rulers when I'm cutting that uh, that's appropriate to the size block or fabric scrap that I'm cutting. So I love that this is all in one set and is at a very reasonable price. So I have some things here that I would like to square up. I also want to check color, different colors of fabric under the rulers so I have a piece of yellow fabric to cut some green and I'm also going to cut some black so let me take the rulers out of the plastic packaging and I will be right back I'm back with my four and a half inch square ruler and I'm going to go ahead and put some of the non slip adhesive rings on them and I'm going to go ahead and put some of the non-slip adhesive rings on it. And since I am, so I am going to take the circles and just put them in a couple of places on the ruler. And it's very uh, sticky, so I do like their non-slip adhesive rings. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that to all of the rulers at this point so I'll know that they have it. Now on this larger ruler, I decided to go ahead and put them in each corner and in the center. 
when I test out rulers to see if I'm going to like them or not, I like to cut on black, green, and yellow fabric just to see how I'm going to see or be able to view the lines. So here I just have a piece of fabric scrap. I'm just going to use a scrap ruler to cut it into a square. I'm just going to put this square in my storage. So I'm just going to see what's the largest size square I could get. And actually it's going to end up being three inches because I don't have three and a half going that way. So I can see very well what it is that I'm cutting. And so I'm going to cut my top and bottom. And remember that I am a left-hander so you would be doing your cuts on the reverse side and now I am going to cut so that I have my three inch line completely on the edge of my fabrics and cut again so now I have a three inch square and I have my grid marks on my mat that I can test that cut and very perfect cut perfect so I like that so again the reason why I like to use multiple size rulers is if I'm cutting three inch squares say from this yellow scrap and I'm using a 12 and a half inch square up ruler. So I want to explain Instead some of, of the markings on the ruler that I've discovered as I've been I'm using the ruler with a lot of turning trying to get it onto this smaller piece of scrap. Whereas if I'm using something that's more in tune to that size, then I can definitely do that as well. I'm going to cut off like a two and a half inch strip just to see how it's going to work here. So I tried to zoom my camera out just a little because this yellow scrap is a little bigger. Now I am actually going to use the 12 and a half square up ruler. And I am just going to cut a two and a half inch strip because that's the biggest that I can get off of this scrap. So I'm just going to pull the remainder to the side. I'm going to rotate it and now I'm going to actually cut it at two and a half inches. So now that I have it at two and a half inches, I can now use my four and a half scrub ruler and start cutting these into two and a half inch squares. And then my last square here, let's see if I can get two and a half. Yes, I can. I got just enough to get two and a half. The size of your ruler, you have your one inch number. So it goes from one, two, three, four, and then you have four and a half. And then it does that along each edge where it gives you your markings. Also, this green square on the inside is what you would use if you were fussy cutting a four and a half inch square. Everything under this green line and on the inside will be included and then what's on the outside would actually be your quarter inch seam. Inside of this inch, they have seven tick marks. The first tick mark is a very thin line that is your one eighth of an inch mark. And then your heavier measurements or your quarter inch tick marks. So you have your one eighth, one quarter, three eighths, one half, five eighths, three quarters, seven eighths, and then your last one is on your main 
inch measurement so i did have to look for that when i first started cutting because i'm used to having it be a little bit more noticeable on the half inch marking so i want to talk about some other lines that are also included on this ruler you have your 30 degree markings you have two sets of those you have your 45 degree markings and then you also have your 60 degree markings and those will come in handy if you need to cut a strip set on a particular degree angle so I like that as well and all of the rulers have all of these markings that I have just discussed I also want to see what the rulers look like when placed on green fabric because that's real critical for me and I am actually seeing all of my edges and I think it's because the green isn't all the way out on the edge that it is clear in that particular space so that's why this ruler is a good choice for green so I'd say that this is a good choice for me to cut my green fabrics as well and I don't need to cut this so now I have some other things I would like to square. and what I want to square these up to is four inches square so I actually want to make my center mark my center line be on the two inch line which is what I'm putting here because I want to cut this four inches so I'm just making sure that I have the two inch line on the ruler and I'm making sure that I have more than four inches over here so I can square up on that side as well. And then when I rotate this around, all I have to do now is line up my four inch marks, which will also put the two inch mark in the center and then just square this up. Now that's made with, I squared that up with the four and a half inch block. Now I'm going to do that one more time, but I'm going to use the 12 inch ruler and just show you the bulkiness of working with something that is too big. So I've zoomed out so you can see a little more. And I'm still probably not going to be able to have a whole lot of room. But just already, I've got this ruler. It's way bigger than what I need. And so um, it's a little bit more cumbersome. I actually have to have it further away from me because I have to have all of the ruler laying flat in order to cut. So I've cut two sides and now I rotate so that I can cut my four inch piece off. And again, I could have had this a lot closer to me if I'm using the appropriate size ruler, which is why I like that these rulers come in a pack of four. So you have all of your square rulers and they're all made by the same manufacturer. And so as you can see, the difference in cutting the two, they're both the same size and you'll get the same result. But when you're working with scraps, which is what I do a lot of, I find it's a lot better to have the appropriate size rulers. So I have gone and gotten a piece of fabric that we can use to do a fussy cut with. And we're actually going to use our six inch ruler for this fussy cut. And what's really nice is it has a little green dot right in the center of the ruler. And so if I put that in the center of whatever it is that I want to cut, then I know that it's going to be equal along all sides. So let's say that I want this dress form to be centered in my fussy cut. So I've got my green dot here and so I know I will have one full dress form in my square and then all of the other dress forms can be cut off. 
this would be great when working with ice spy quilts so there is my fussy cut square and like I said, I do like that it has the highlighted green frame so that you know exactly where your block will end in the finished block. So I highly recommend these rulers. I can't wait to use them in my future projects. I am actually going to switch these out and make these my base rulers because I really like these rulers. And again, if you're interested in purchasing these rulers, I will leave a link down in the description box and it will have a discount code for you. So thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.